Hi everybody, I'm going to compare HDR tone mapping between um, Lightroom, which is my usual tool, and the demonstration version of Affinity, which I've just downloaded today um, I'm on a 10 day trial. So I'll show you how uh, it goes in, in Lightroom. So here's a batch of five photos I've taken of a house for a client. Um, I often take five just to be sure that when I get home I've got all the information I want, nothing worse than having to go back to a job because you've, you've kind of not got enough highlight or shadow detail. So in Lightroom it's quite simple really these days, you just highlight the ones you want to tone map, you can right click on it, go to Photo Merge HDR, notice there's a shortcut Control plus H if you want to do it that way. Up pops this box. Um, we've got a little bit of a progress bar to endure. So we'll let that just do its thing. So it's not like massively fast, but. Um, you know, it's it's beavering away. It's probably taking its time because we've got the de ghosting switched on. And what de-ghosting does, if someone's walking through the scene, in each of the photos, each of the five photos are in a slightly different position. And what de-ghosting does, it just picks one of those positions and gets rid of the rest of them. So it's quite a complicated um, way of, uh, you know, quite a complicated thing for it to work out. Okay. So I'll just have a very quick look at the options. It's auto align, which gets all the photos lined up. If you photograph it on a tripod, they should all be lined up anyway. But um, it's worth checking that anyway. Auto settings. Well, when, once it's blended, it just does the equivalent of clicking the auto button on the uh, the tone part of develop. So it'll darken the highlights, brighten the shadows and do what it thinks right with those sliders, a bit of contrast and exposure. So it'll change exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, black and white, those those six sliders. Um, and then uh, you've got the de-ghost overlay. So if you had the person walking across the screen, it'll just show you, you know, um, options for that. And finally create stack. So when we <coughs> hit merge, what it'll do, all these six, all these five photos will just go into uh, a stack of um, what looks like one photo, and on the top of that will be the merged HDR, which is it's a DNG file. That's what it creates. So we can see the the progress is pretty quick. There we go. So that's what you get. If you want to edit that, you go into develop, and you've got all the sliders here. You can never dream of really, so you can just play away. It's just like using Lightroom right normally, but you've just got more more power. You know, to plus and minus ten on the um, exposure for instance, where normally it's plus and minus three. Not that you don't want to go that far. So that's how Lightroom does it. Now, from what I've seen with Affinity, it's not like Lightroom or On One Raw and programs like Capture One, um, where everything's kind of imported into a catalogue. You've got to um, go find these things. So let's go and find those same files. So if I go back to Lightroom, right click on one of the files and say Show in Explorer, it pops up where the actual location is, so it saves me having to think, where is it, you know. So let's go back to Affinity Pro. So new merge, so we'll go to add. We'll put those in there. And which photos were they? It was 139. And there's five of them, wasn't it? So it's one, two, three, four, five. Yep, and it's gonna be that, that photo there. So if we click on open, so they're just the raw files out of a Canon 5D Mark IV. And I'm just using the defaults like I did in the last one. So um, I'm going to auto align images. Let's show what this perspective thing is. Goes through, well, I suppose it's only fair to tick that. 
because we did in Lightroom. Noise reduction. This is, I suppose, if you've got um, a very dark shot, sometimes a, uh, there's a lot of noise in dark photos if you try and brighten them up. And then tone map. So we're basically doing the same thing. So we click OK. And let's just see how long this takes. So if we look in the. Ah, oh, okay. So it, it shows us what it's doing as it goes. So it's doing its aligning. So it's still aligning now. So it looks like the uh, the brightest one. Oh, that's the brightest one there. So you've got all the detail in the doors. Right, so now it's merging. This is unusable, isn't it? I know a lot of people slag Lightroom off for being slow, but this is incredible. So imagine, like me, you come away from a job like this and you've got I don't know, 70 brackets of five to do. It's just gonna be unusable, isn't it?
Yeah, it's uh, not good, is it? Not good. Processed ten or more Lightroom like, photos in the time it's taken to get this far. Plus, with Lightroom, you can uh, process many in parallel, so you can highlight five, get them tone mapping, and highlight another five, and get them tone mapping. Um, with this, the, the entire um, application is locked whilst it's doing this, so there's nothing you can do. So it's um, this is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen anything so so slow. Yep, that's very slow. Jesus, wet. That's been about four or five minutes now. This is a um, Intel i7 processor. It's a few years old, but it's it's a fair beast. It's got 16 gig of fast RAM. Oh, are we there? Wow. That that was um, incredible. It's taken about five to six minutes to do. That. Once you're there get something fairly nice to to play with so you can tone map it nicely but that is just uh, that is just incredible so there's you know, shadows there maybe put the So you can edit these things quite nicely once it's there, but as you see... So, sadly, as much as I like this demo of Affinity, I won't be buying it because what I've just seen is unusable, really. I mean, I've also tried it by um, creating a load of um, intermediate EXR files which you can batch process in, um, in Photomatic 6 so these are like the intermediate sort of tone map files and you can open them in um, Affinity which is really good because tone mapping in Photomatic is a little bit I don't know it's not ideal you know, I've seen better tools Affinity's tools are quite good but you drag one of these into Affinity, you wait for four minutes, five minutes, and you just can't do that. As an amateur, it's frustrating. As a professional, you're just, um, you're just wasting money. So, sorry, kids, if you want to do HDR, stick with Lightroom or Photomatics if you want to do it quickly and efficiently. Cheers.